Hi, good day. Well, welcome back. All right, so we're going to jump right into it because this one could probably be a, a little bit long. So last time, this is where we left off. We were able to, you know, we're doing this to-do application, and we're the purpose of this is to kind of show you how to do um, an application. Well, the purpose is really to show you why I'm using AngularJS and or why you should use a application framework and specifically why you should use and why I'm using AngularJS. You don't have to use AngularJS after you learn AngularJS or whatever. You can learn another one or you could just go and learn another one. And as I use Angular, you, you try um, doing the same thing in your other framework. But certainly, I hope to at least con convince you that using libraries and other things that people who've been through this a number of times, they've come up with patterns and so you don't have to do it the hard way. So we're going to start off by doing it kind of like the hard way and then kind of shift over to using libraries to depend on a little bit more and help us out. And the purpose is I just show you why it's faster to use libraries and so on and it's harder when you try to just do it um, the hard way. Okay, but it's doable. Anyway, so uh, so let's me um, commit my changes uh, that I've I did from the last time. So you can see I had some modify file, and I'm gonna say commit, and I uh, don't oh know. I'm gonna say uh, I don't know. Work in progress, um, basic um, setup, and um, okay, and then I'll close that. I am doing it from the command line, but I can easily do it from the command line. And my thing is a little messed up there. I'm gonna refresh it. So that's what we had the last time. And what we did was we had some, you know, this form and we had some default values there. So our input to have a value already and progress is, you know, it's gonna be set to one of these things on the first one. And so if you click save, um, we demonstrated that um, what happens is our save button here called save to do and this function is defined here in our code script. And what it does is it look up the description and we talk about how you use JavaScript to look up, you know, the element description element, which is here with the ID description um, here. And then the other one is the ID, the select with the ID progress. We're able to look them up, get the value, and then we construct this Java object. And we talk about that and how we talk about array, creating an empty array create this Java object with the key description and the value description that we get from here. So this is key, value, and then this is key, is value. They don't have to be the same. They could have been, I mean, the, the key could have been different, but it's going to make it easier when we start um, referencing uh, using this object. And then once we have this object, we pushed it or put it, added to the array. And so there's our to-do array here, which is empty, and we said pushed, which means add this object to the array. And then now we print out the size of that array. And then we saw just now that the message was, you know, size zero. Uh, let, me res um, let me try that again. And if I click save, I can see size is one. But you might not have noticed it went by too quickly. There was a blink here because when we click the button, by default it did submit. And we're not gonna spend too much time on it. Basically you create a form and you follow something and you hit a button. Uh, the web browser collect all the values from the fields in that form and you know send it to the server where you load this page. So the server where I load this page, this is my local host. So there's a bit of networking thing. This 127.00.1, that's actually mean by local computer. I can actually take this out and call it local host and it would still work. But you know, if you're loading your loading your page from another ser play server with Google.com or Yahoo or something, and you follow the form there, um, in code, when you click the submit, it by default tries to send it back to that server. Uh, now there are some properties, attributes that you can set on the form element to tell it where to send that, um, the, the result of this value that it collects from these different fields. So in this case, when you have input and select, it's only two, but it sends some other things. And you can use actions to say where to send it to, but we're not gonna worry about that today. Um, that's one thing and you can say how it should send it and there's something called method and it takes some value get and post are two of them that you primarily use but you can use other ones and that tells it how it should make the, the request to the server to, to, to provide the value. Okay, we're not going to focus on that. The, the, the reason why I'm even talking about it though is let me refresh again 
and I do, well, our array should be empty because we didn't add anything in it. I do save and the array size is one because we were printing out the array size after we push a value into it. What you should expect is if I do save again, I should get two, but you're still getting one. So there are many times I click save, I'm still getting one. And that's because my page is getting refreshed and that's where the submit come in. The form is being submitted and refreshed. And hence, if you keep your eyes here, you're gonna see that oh, when I hit this, the form is being reloaded. You see, it happened really quickly. As soon as I click OK, it's gonna reload. So I'm gonna click OK here, but keep your eyes there. And you're gonna see it, it's really fast. Okay, if you don't, you're not convinced, the fact that every time I click save and the fact it, it, the, the length of the array is one just should convince you that oh, it's being refreshed, it's being reloaded in the page. And since it's reloading the page, it reinitializes everything and hence thing. So we need to prevent the default action. So the default action of this button is to do a submit. And there are a number of ways you can do it. Now, just like how we have available to us in the scripting environment, this variable document and of course we also saw the alert is another function that's available to us there's another one called event that's available to us here so we can pass event um, to our function as a parameter to our function and then of course when we define our function we have the um, event here now I cheated a little bit because I wrote it in just before I wrote an event here before um, the video start but now what we can do is say event uh, EVT. I mean, I could call it anything. I could call it event again if I wanted to, but I just wanted to show that the name you give inside your function and the name you provide outside to say this is what I'm passing in are two different things, okay? But it, it, whatever value event is here, that's going to also appear as the value here, EVT. So I say event that prevent default, and that's a function I call to say prevent default. And once I do that, um, I can save and go back here and let's just refresh and I do save and now I see it's, it's one and I click again and it's two and if you keep your eyes on there when I click here I'm gonna same as before I'm gonna try and dismiss this alert and if you keep your eyes there you can see it doesn't ref have that quick blink that was before I don't know if the video is gonna reveal that but you should now be convinced that oh, it's actually not submitting the form because or at least the browser is not reloading that form because um, the, the, the array is growing, which is exactly what we want to see. All right, so we've solved that problem. Now, the other thing we, we need to do is everything we click save, we actually want to see um, the new things that we added here, you know, appear in this list. So how do we do that? Well, we have to um, talk about how do you modify um, you know, elements in code. And um, I don't really remember if we talked about it the last time. But let's just try, I, I know, how, so we, we know that we can get the value here. We obviously did that in the last time where we get the value and we printed it out, hence why we went ahead and just start saving it in these objects now. So why don't we make it so that every time we um, click save, we change, um, you know, Let's put a uh, header one tag somewhere, just for testing. We put it below uh, this list box. And every time we click save, we're gonna change the value of that header one tag. So here's our um, you know, table, and this is a div there. And after it, let's put another div. Uh, we didn't really cover div tag. Oh, well, we should have, here I'm not gonna talk about div tag. Um, Cause this is just a bonus video to try and show about AngularJS, how to use AngularJS, right? Why we use an AngularJS. And so let's put the error one tag, or error two, ID equals a test. You know, we could cut anything, right? Or uh, yeah, let's call it test, that's fine. Or debug for it, for example, debug. And um, there's nothing in there. And so I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna refresh the page just so that I'll, there's nothing there. And, but if I put something in there, let's say, um, temp, all right, or placeholder, all right, I'm going to save it, and there we go, right, if I refresh it, placeholder, and so uh, we should expect, what we want is this place, this value placeholder to be replaced with whatever, descript uh, whatever description or to-do is, so how do we get that done, well, uh, we already have the description here, well, why don't we, um, so we're going to bastardize our code a little bit, 
instead of printing out the alert, we know that's working already. So um, let's comment it out. We're not going to remove it just in case we run into a problem. We want to make sure it's our function is being called. Why don't we do this? Var debug uh, element, you know, is equal to document that get element by ID. And we want to get the debug element. You could use double quotes or single quotes here. And then the, for the debug element, we want to set its inner HTML equal. And that's the strange thing. That's how you have to do it. For these guys, we say we want to get the value of these controls, these form elements. But when we're talking about uh, uh, HTML elements that are not like form elements, you want to change their what they contain. You said inner HTML, okay? Whatever nest inside of them. And so um, we said change in, inner HTML, and we want to change that to description. So let's just change it to the description that we got, okay? And that's all there is to it. And let's just refresh just to be sure. And so we're going to say, bam, and look at that, the description change. Okay, and let's change this to something else. Let's say, pick up, you know, milk. And save, and there we go. And get bread. And change the HTML. So why am I showing you this? Because that's how we're going to replace the rows inside of this table. We, we have a ID for this table called listing, and we're going to build up a set of rows in string. We're going to build it up in, in string and then just say, replace the inner HTML of the table. So let's do just that. So I'm going to remove this. And you know, it's good to, as you do stuff, let me put it back. As you do things, you commit along your way what you're doing. And so uh, you can always go back to it. And so let's commit our changes now. And we're going to say this is work in progress. Um, setting, um, test setting HTML. All right. So that's what that's about. And let's close that. And so we can always go back to just getting the practice of side to bug and stuff. And so, excuse me. And so here we have this variable inside our script and there's a function. And what we should do is after we've added something to function, we should call some other function called like update um, listing. All right. Um, we can call it anything we want. And if we call this function called update listing, we obviously don't have the function yet. So we should write it. And so function update listing and now we're gonna write what this function is supposed to do because I don't want this video to go too long what I'm gonna do is pause here and then I'll um, I'll resume you know um, with when I have all the code in place oh maybe I should just I have written the code already so maybe I should just copy and paste it so um, that way uh, I don't have to worry about pause it so Yep. Let me copy this, and I'll explain it out. So here we go. Paste. All right. So this is probably not format properly. So this is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna have a variable called length, and we're gonna when we this function is call. Remember, safe to do is being called by the button. Every time we click that button, and at the end of adding an object to the array, it's going to call update the listing now so that the listing, this function can say, okay, the current items in the array gets um, put in the table. So we said get the current list of that. We create a variable i, we set it equals to zero. We have something called row equals to null and then all equals to empty string. Now, this is important. So we're going to loop over. And so here we are. And so this is the for loop. And what we're doing here is we're saying we've already got the length of the to-do list. And I'm going to say a row, this is this variable, is equals to a, you know, tag that is a TR for table row. And then inside of it is followed by a table data. And table data, I'm going to use I to mean, because um, what do we want? We want the, the reach row to have the number uh, of that item, 
you know, that to do. So it's going to be i plus 1. So if i is 0, plus 1 is going to be 1. And when i is 1, it means the second one is actually going to be um, 2. So we want that to be a table data. So table data, that. And then I do another table data. But notice how these plus, I'm just using plus to mean add to the string or concatenate, string concatenation. So I'm really building up, building up one long string that represents this. So I'm building this in code. That's what I'm doing. I'm building this exact same string that you see here in code. Except no, I'm using the fact that here I could type in one and if I put a second one I would type in two. But now I have to compute it because I'm using a for loop. So that's exactly what you see me doing it. I'm computing what that value should be. And then the description, well to do that square bracket i. Well to do is the name of the uh, array we have and using this, this is how you index an array or you get an element from it square bracket and i. And i is zero means the very first one that we put in and then one means the second one. That's just how computer programming I mentioned. When we do JavaScript programming in the rest of the tutorial you should have covered this. Anyway, and so uh, now we get the description. So now this represents that one of those to-dos that we put in there. It's going to be one of these. And then that description. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this would have it will be covered in the JavaScript programming, so I'm not going to explain all of this, but basically that's what we do. And we do a button, and we do, we call, you know, we have to call methods for these guys, delete and edit. And so we pass to those methods, you know, i, which is the particular thing that they're going to delete. So you want when delete is called with zero, it deletes the first one. When delete is called with one, it deletes the second one because you're going to have a list of these. And then after I've created a row, I want to add to all, you know, that row. So I'm going to keep appending all these rows that I create onto all, which is the same thing as we have pretty much here, right? So oh, that's why all is an empty string, because if I say empty string plus row, which this I know is a string, then they give me the first row. And then when I do the second row, I'm going to have a first row plus the second row, and I'm going to keep accumulating. If this was null, what I'll be trying to do is say null plus a string, and you cannot add a null to a string. So this would fail, hence why this had to start off with an empty string. I'm going to use double thing here. All right, so now this loop around, and we have all of them. Now I, I have an alert just to confirm that that's what's happening. It's building up. And as I showed before in our previous example, how we were able to change the inner HTML, let me look up that table listing and change the inner HTML by simply setting it to the string. That's all I did. So it was the in, this is the table, right? List in, and I set it in a HTML. So let's do a save, and let's refresh. Uh, and there we go. We're gonna say save, and this should replace. Okay, so here we go. We see that print out from from the my to do here, and now it replaced this. Okay. And because I do progress, that I knew that progress which we saw was just the number, 0, 1, the values. That's why this is that value. If I change this to this, we should expect to be 1. If I do this, it should be 2. And then I'll change this to get milk. And I'll do save. And you can see it's building up. It used the very first one. Then it used the second one here. And I said, OK, there we go. So you see that it's actually working. But I see a couple of things that we need to change. One. We shouldn't have these numbers be here. We should be using this instead. That's one. Two, uh, we should erase this and reset these two. So the user can type the new thing as opposed to after I type get milk. I shouldn't leave this as, as milk. Oh, we have to get rid of this too, this placeholder. And we have that these guys call some function, but these functions aren't defined. Delete and edit. So let's clean that up. So let's get rid of this with that we don't want that and another thing we actually lost our table head over here right you notice that we lost our table head. so let's fix those things really some of these things really quickly so after we create a to do by setting the value here what we should do is erase them so we should say uh, description element that um, value <laughs> here's the su surprising thing All right, I'll just show you so do that and then progress that value is equals to zero. We want to set back to the other one. 
okay and we can check and see if that works just now okay we can check and see if that works right now and we don't want this to keep showing up anymore we know this works so let's save it and let's uh refresh and let's do this let's say add this and notice bam this this change and then we'll do that we'll check this to two and then do bam and look at that this is set look at this one this one didn't change okay so this one did not change to, to zero um so we'll fix that later that, that's not that important but we got this one to change and that's what i tell you some of these um some of these uh L, um, controls you have to set the you might get the value this where we set that value but how you update them and so on they, they all differ but let's continue and fix our table um so why don't we do this so this we didn't really you probably when you look at the tutorial we would have done it so i'm gonna use table um i'm gonna paste some code here that puts the header this part that we want to keep always in a table head t head and this part that we want to replace in a t body and then i'm gonna move the listing id onto the t body uh, you'll see it'll make sense when i update the code and so i have some code to the side here and let me paste that in let's see if i have some typing i think i spend more time talking about stuff in more details than i initially planned and so besides the table being reformatted that's all that happened is i moved the id from here the listing id to onto t body and i just nest the thing here and i have a t head now let's save and refresh and this wouldn't look very different from what we have at all at all there's no difference but the only difference comes in when we hit this now it updates the bottom and keeps our head that's because we're looking up this t body and we replace in the inner html of the t body which are these rows as opposed to the table where we're replacing everything so that's the advantage okay and, blah, 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 blah. and so now we still we maintain our heading now um, it's fairly easy to figure out how to change this, right? I mean, we can do that in code. We can simply say, when we're saving this, uh, where is it? When we're displaying it, uh, we go and loop, looping over, instead of just putting in the progress here, we can actually look it up, right? So we know that this value is gonna evaluate to, to zero, one, or two. Why don't we now look, up, uh, look it up and say, progress description you know from some variable progress description or something like that or progress value uh, label uh, progress value label is in some array where we look up so you see we have a nested array so you have an array here in which we're going to look up i and then look up its value and then use the resultant value which we know is a zero or one to further index into another array which we can call progress labels all right let's call it progress labels labels with a s all right so i'm gonna copy that so don't let's type it and then what i'm gonna do is instead of actually recreating the variable each time i'm just put it out here and i'm gonna say uh var uh geez, var progress labels uh equals to an array with not what did i say not started let's use not started in progress And completed right and so now what's gonna happen is I have these three things this is gonna be 0 1 and 2 and so I use that instead when I print it out when I print out here and so let's save it and refresh and now when I choose let's say completed and I save now it says completed and if I do blah 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 and use in progress and I save it's in progress blah, blah blah I say not started and save it says not started okay so this look like what we want so far we still didn't write the functions for this but we do have the function name here so it says delete to do and blah 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 so and edit to do so let's just write them in so um, so function the uh, delete to do takes a 
index of the you know, where that element is the object is that you want to remove from the array the to do's array and function edit to do also takes an index you know the index into a thing and so one way uh, the easiest one to do is probably delete well to do a delete simply means remove it from the array and then we just call update list right so we can say delete you so you delete something from an array we said delete from the to do's array well actually that's not exactly right how you do it but I can explain you just have to trust me on this. When we do it in JavaScript, um, it's going to make sense. So splice and um, splice, and I'm going to look this up. Um, but splice, and then I think is one, and then the offset. Um, the offset is i, and then one, and then that should remove it. And then what we call is update listing. <laughs> oh my god, look this up. All right, and so now. We can uh, save this and let's see if this works. I'm gonna look this up. But either way, we'll fix this. If this doesn't work, we'll fix it in the next video because this video is already running a bit long. Um, so it's getting up on 30 minutes here. And so we certainly don't wanna make these too long. We wanna make these nice and short. So there's a lot of material we cover here in this one. So now let's see if this works. So I do save and then let's do something else. And then I say save and then blah, blah, blah and then that and then say save and now i want to delete two i should be able to okay and that didn't work um let's see here uh, delete to do okay um why that didn't work all right so we'll fix that i'll fix it in the next video um but i should be calling my method my delete to do here this should be called should be called so alert this should be called so save let me verify that's being called and then I just gotta review my code and see why my delete is the splice maybe I, I have the splice incorrect but let's see um, I don't call those methods from up here all right so I actually have to add something to call it okay so delete Okay, so it's not even calling um, my code, so I need to see why. So a button on click, delete to do. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, my code is not even being called, and I do not know why. So copy and paste. I probably made a mistake somewhere. Paste, and this look right. And delete to do, edit to do. Um, function, function. Huh. Uh, I have to, so I have to verify the code. And one way I can do it is say view, and I'm gonna end this very soon. And I said view source, and if I scroll down, I'm gonna open this up a little bit. If I scroll along to see what the rendered code look like. Yeah, it's giving me the original code as opposed to what it is right now. And that's not what I want. Um, developer, tools, and source uh, element. There we go. And so here, output, table, table data, body, table body. And this is what I want to look at, table row. And so click equals delete tool. Yeah, so this all looks good. It's rendered properly, but uh, for some reason, it's not calling the code. So um, I have to debug why that's happening now. 
But anyway, thanks for your time. I know this is running a bit long. I'll figure out why it is and uh, show you. It should work. Um, don't know why it's not happening. All right. Take care. See you in the next video.